I, I, you all know him, but here's Gary, the chief cat herder, chief uh, field boss, trail boss, and uh, the amateur radio expert of the year for field day. <laughs> Thanks. Hold the applause till uh, after field day, please. Um, I've got a few slides, not many, but I want to uh, point out a few things, and what I intend to do is talk a little bit and then uh, um, go to the band, respective band captains uh, to talk about their respective parts. So um, you can go to the next slide, if you will. Okay, so uh, this highlights uh, there's still a need for volunteers. I think there's always going to be a need for volunteers up until... Uh, everybody's going to be comfortable that field day is well on its way to success. So uh, food serving, mess tent, uh, assistance, cleanup, all those activities, you need to reach out to Mike and Lee and uh, help them with that. And uh, any gaps they have in uh, needs, please, please help them. Uh, ground rod installation team, John Acton is uh, the lead on that. He's going to need help. He's going to need additional people to help him. And I've got the last two hours before the contest starts. So uh, this is not a one-person job spread over 24 hours. This is about a four- or five-person job spread over about two hours. So anybody who can please help uh, late Friday, Saturday morning and very early Saturday afternoon, please come see me so that we can get the ground rods uh, and leads installed. Thanks. Sure. And I, I think that actually happened earlier Saturday morning uh, once we get the generator set and some uh, places identified. Um, operators, uh, all the band stations are going to need operators to operate CW or single side band to uh, get all the points and make things a success. Uh, there is. Well, I say that uh, each station is going to kind of have a sign up, I believe, and kind of handle things the way they want to handle them. We are going to have an uh, antenna meeting and a station meeting after this meeting concludes, and so we can talk about more about that. But uh, yeah, it's a good question. OK, sorry. Um, additional spud gun and slingshot operators probably going to be out there early Saturday morning uh, to, uh, to mid-morning to uh, noon. Um, and I've got a sign-up sheet on the website that you can go to and put your name and what days you're available and times. And I've got a paper copy of that that I'll pass around for those that don't want to um, do the electronic version. P please feel free to add information to that. Um, you can see there's se several crunch times. Um, Thursday being the first part of it is when uh, equipment's going to be picked up from the storage locker. So uh, according to Pete, we need six to eight people, able-bodied people, to uh, lift and put things into the trailer. Um, both Nancy and uh, Pete will bring trailers out there to pick up the respective uh, uh, cooking grills and locker contents. Harry. I saw that said 4 o'clock Friday. No earlier than 4 o'clock Friday. Yeah, that's not correct. Originally, uh, talking to Brendan, it said... Uh, that setup was going to start at 5 p.m., and that was definitely wrong. Um, the intent was to start at 2 p.m., but in looking at the rules, uh, we can start much earlier than that. Uh, the park permit is for 4 p.m., however, uh, Pete's got to call into them to change that time and get approval to start earlier. So, tentatively, unless things change, uh, the uh, trailer with the contents will uh, probably deliver around noon on Friday, and some people might get there a little earlier than that to launch lines and trees. So that's the best information I have at the moment, but uh, 4 o'clock is not really accurate. All right. So what time are we going to start emptying the trailer on Friday? What time will gear start coming out of the trailer on Friday? You coming out of the shelter? Out of the trailer on Friday to people who needed to set up at the time park. One is at it's more a few questions. Since he's got the truck and he's delivering the, the goods. Joe has been asking questions having with what time on Friday. Gary just said the truck was showing up at noon on Friday and we could start work. We can load it at noon on Friday. Thursday. 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 Yeah, that happens Thursday. 
We can we can be there at noon on Friday. What time do you want to start taking gear out of the trailer on Friday and giving it to people? To set up. Whenever I, we have people, to know whenever we have people there to unload it. That would have been a little on noon, and if we need to talk more about it after the meeting, we'll do that. But we'll, yeah, noon. All right. Um, you can see the other crunch times there. I'm not going to uh, ad nauseum go into detail on any of them. Obviously, Sunday, the breakdown and the wrap up uh, is critical to have fresh, fresh hands and people, able bodied people to help. And of course, weather might impact that as far as when things start breaking down. Some of the mess tent and some of those areas might break down sooner than the operating stations. Okay. Oops. All right, here's just a few th simple things people can do. Uh, bring bags or blocks of ice. Uh, we're gonna need those throughout the weekend. Um, I was able to find this stand at one of the hardware stores. It's a bag that I uh, intend to put uh, ice water in and uh, water and put a free sign on it for everybody. Um, drinking water, yeah, and uh, potentially if we need more guy rope or other supplies, if you've got some of that stuff and can have it handy in your car, that would be helpful. Um, I'd encourage everybody to print out field day flyers and pass them to neighbors or youth or work or wherever you think there's somebody that might be interested to attend. I've done that with uh, some CERT events I volunteered for recently and I, hopefully it'll pan out. Um, there's a few other needs about potentially uh, more coax. We're working that problem currently, but if you do have some, some ex too many things to hold at the, at the moment. Okay, Thank you. Okay, so anyway, the coax, uh, we may need additional coax because the band plan has changed from last year and there's some lengthier coax runs. Uh, we really don't have a lot of extra room in the storage warehouse at all to store a bunch of extra coax, so it's easier if we have some that's loaned to us and we can use and we can give it back at the end of field day. Um, if, you've, if you've been involved in a cert and got a bag, bring it, duct tape's handy, along with gloves, knee pads. Um, and uh, please bring your work gloves uh, to work with the guy ropes and lines, uh, long pants and long sleeve shirts. You ought to have some of that in the car because as we use the spud guns and get uh, lines launched um, over trees, there are, is a lot of poison ivy potentially in some of that. And uh, anyway, uh, let's see, let me go on. Okay, here are the team leads and uh, what I plan to do is uh, have Leon talk next having to do with the band station, uh, stations and the antenna plan. Okay, uh, good evening everybody. Um, so I think uh, if you've heard us talk in the last few minutes, there was a group of us who got together to um, take a look at our um, antennas and, and try to optimize uh, the antenna setup that we have to minimize interference that's caused us problems in years gone by. So uh, we came up with this plan and uh, we, it's, it's more ambitious than we've uh, pulled off in the past, but we, we think we have the capability of doing it because we've been working on this for a reasonable period of time. So let me just kind of walk you through what we have planned here. Um, as, as we have in the past, we're going to have um, three Moxons set up. These are the, the 40 meter, two 40 meter Moxons that we've had, one for CW, one for sideband. And if the propagation gods are with us, we're gonna take uh, the opportunity to put up the 15 meter Moxon as well in, in case 15 uh, meters happens to open up. Um, we have our three beams, so I'm bringing my hex beam as I have in years past. Uh, Jack AI4SV has uh, donated a hex beam to the club that we used for the first time last year. And then um, uh, John Burt's willing, we'll have the spider beam up set up again uh, this year as well. Uh, we also have the same dipoles that we've had, although we're ori instead of orienting them along the tree lines uh, here and here, we're going to uh, take them from a tree line across to the central tree and the other one here. This will be for the CW station. This will be for the sideband station. Uh, we're also going to have a, uh, we have, uh, our fifth station is the, uh, our digital station. 
So back up, let me re make sure everybody remembers that we're going to have two CW stations, two sideband stations. Um, each sideband and CW will be uh, operating on 20 or 80. The other two stations, CW and sideband, will operate on 15 and 40. And, and maybe other bands, depending on the conditions and, and so forth. And then we have what we're calling our opportunity station, which will operate primarily digital, but possibly also CW, depending again on the band conditions and so forth. Doug is leading that station. Um, so for Doug um, and the digital work, we're going to place a 40 meter vertical down at the bottom of the hill that he'll be using for transmitting and receiving. And um, we're also uh, expecting that he'll use the, um, we're going to put up a, a, a 160 meter off center fed dipole uh, that will be uh, primary for Doug's use, but also uh, available for the GOTA station and for the possibly the, um, uh, the, the um, 80, um, uh, 8020 uh, CW station. So, so this is Doug's station here, uh, and then this is uh, where we're going to place the GOTA station. Uh, where I'm showing these stations is kind of rough, you know, that as we set up and we look at the site and decide on where we're going to be, there might be a little bit of movement plus or minus where these stations are and wherever, where's Brendan? Uh, Brendan, I want to make sure that when we set up, we leave enough room for you and whatever it is you want to do with your CERT folks and so forth. So w I want to chat with you about that at some point this evening as well. Okay. Um, then the uh, the GOTA station this year will be using a uh, a vertical a delta loop that's cut for 20 meters. That's going to be the band that they're planning on operating primarily. But uh, uh, you know, depending on sharing and so forth, they'll have an opportunity to use the um, 160 meter off center fed dipole as well. And then lastly, the other innovation that we have is that for 40 meters, um, we're going to set up a receive only dipole at the bottom of the field. Um, Lee, uh, Lee Gerlach is working on um, creating a narrow band pass filter that will um, optimize its reception on 40 meters and is also going to put a preamp down at the bottom of the field. And uh, we're going to run a uh, feed line up and split the, um, the receive uh, signal or the, the feed line, the receive feed line into uh, the 40 meter side band and also into the 40 meter uh, CW tent so that they They'll have a separate receive antenna down the hill, isolated from the um, from the two moxons again, with a hope to um, minimize interference. So uh, we think we're in pretty good shape for the uh, for the setup. We uh, uh, Gary and Doug and I um, unfurled the two 40 meter moxons this afternoon to check them out to see to make sure that they're ready to go. Um, their SWR is good, and um, all the pieces are are there and so forth. So uh, we expect to have those ready to go. And um, so I think we're in pretty good shape. So before I go on, I'll just ask if uh, Lee or any of the other members of the, of the antenna team want to say anything. Did Lee, did you want to add anything at all? I think the most important thing we're striving for is a lot of flexibility, more than we've had in the past. Like for, for GOTA. Um, so you know, the idea is to be as flexible as we can, provide everybody with opportunities, depending on what propagation is. You know, we, we want to maximize the uh, ability to make um, contacts. For GOTA, we want to make it easy for them to make contacts. And that's why uh, rather than just being stuck on 20, uh, they're going to have the option of using other bands. Um, I think in the afternoon, particularly late in the afternoon, 75 will probably be a very good band for them. It's got a lot of space. It's not going to be all that crowded. Uh, it'll be local. It won't be DX. But, hey, you're going to be able to make contacts. Scott, you had a question? Uh, do you have enough antenna or do you want us to bring ours? Um, I, if you have one, you can bring that. Great, but I'm, I'm going to bring mine. Where we are short, possibly, as Gary already mentions, with coaxial cable. You know, I've... Um, We've looked at the club inventory and so forth, but if we had a couple extra hundred feet of um, coax, be sure to label it with your call sign so we can give it back to you at the end. Um, that would be great. So, and then to clarify with regard to setup, we really want to try to get on top of it this year. So a group of us are going to go out early in the morning. We're hoping to get there like about 10 o'clock or so and just toss lines over trees. Can you push some of them up Friday night? 
Oh, Friday morning. Oh, Friday, Friday morning. morning. Okay. Friday morning. Yeah. Okay. I so, you know, Saturday morning. so, so again, just to clarify, we are now of the understanding, and there's a clarification with a, a frequently asked question on the AWRL website. You can have 24 hours to set up uh, in advance of the uh, the start of the contest, and it's 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 24. There, there, you could start after a certain time on Thursday, I think. But then when you get started, you can do uh, 24 hours of setup. So you could do you could do 12 hours on Friday and then get up in the morning on Saturday and do another 12 hours if you're crazy enough to get up that early. So we're going to take advantage of that extra time. In the past, we started later in the day thinking that we could only start after 2 o'clock, but we can start earlier than that if we want to. To help you guys? So if you, if you can come, so, so the official start time, and I want to make sure that we're crystal clear on this, is we're going to have the trailer ready to unload to uh, your question over here at noon. So for sure, we'll be ready to go with the trailer to unload at noon. There is a group of us that's going to go early to shoot lines over trees so that we're ready to yank up the antennas when the time is there. So if you have time to come, that would be great. I'm thinking personally that I'd like to get out there around 10 in the morning. And um, I know Doug and Gary are interested in going out there. Uh, my son Jacob is going to come, so there will be at least four of us. And if there's a few others who want to come out and help do that, um, that would be great. So is, is there anybody who would be interested in coming out early? And you could let us know. Just, okay, if you're coming. So, Kirk, um, just, just let us know. Okay, that would be great. So Matt would be interested. So yeah, we, we want to kind of keep it a little under control because we, we're, we've asked for permission, but we're hoping that maybe we can beg for a little bit of forgiveness for getting out there so early as well. So okay. So question. The question is, if we start at noon on Friday, do we have to cease setting up at noon on Saturday whether we're done or not? No. Um, it's 24 hours. It but it has to be continuous. But it's not continuous. So if you stop it and start to get at 4 a.m., that's 24 a.m. All right, we're getting a little bit short of time. Are there any critical questions that people want to ask? I just want to make sure. Yeah. All right, so thanks to all that has helped put this plan together. Mike, do you or... Uh, Okay, this is pretty quick. On the meal plan, two parts of the meal plan. First of all, uh, we're going to cook for about 280 people. That's about 50 more people than we had last year. We know that we had more people for breakfast last year than we planned for. So, uh, there we go. So, uh, we will, uh, we've increased the number of of meals served to 280 meals per served. Uh, this is a meal schedule. Uh, John Young will be doing the smoked ribs. I'll be working on hamburgers and the like for the Saturday noontime meal. Both of these are well. People are doing uh, antenna and uh, station setup. So this is pretty much a pick up as you go type of uh, meal service. Uh, Lee is going to be the lead for the, the uh, Saturday evening meal. Uh, the theme is something along the lines of uh, chicken with salsa. Lee, you want to add more to that? Um, first of all, I so Mike gave me the idea of trying to do um, themed dinner. And we started with Italian. I thought, well, it's. Temperature's going to be in the high 80s, so maybe that's not the best thing. So we're going to do a tropical theme this year. Um, if I can find it in the grocery store, and supposedly Walmart has it frozen, some banana leaves. We're going to do Kahlua pork. We're going to do uh, grilled citrus marinated chicken with the tropical salsa. That's, that's it. 
I'm going to try to make a shrimp and imitation crab poke. And then we're going to do grilled veggies with rice noodles. And then a bunch of um, tropical themed side dishes. And hopefully, uh, I'm thinking about maybe doing some oriental stir fried green beans on the site. So, the bottom line though is I need like four other people to help cook, okay, to pull this off, even with our prep. Four people actually cooking. So, so you have three. You want another person cooking? Yeah, I'm trying to take another person cooking. Okay. okay, so that's fine. Thank you. We'll come back to this chart in a second. So back on the meal plan, uh, there'll be a midnight meal that we will do. Last year I pooped out and midnight meal started at 9 o'clock because I was fast asleep by 9.15. But be that as it may, that we'll try to do a better job on the uh, Saturday midnight uh, snack. Uh, Sunday morning, Ron's going to be our chef, and we're going to do eggs to order. So come on over for breakfast. Backing up on the Saturday dinner, that's really our main meal. Uh, a lot of folks will have their spouses drive out for that meal. You're welcome to bring a spouse. Uh, one thing we would like to know is if anybody has any dietary restrictions, uh, we can plan for that if we know ahead of time. I know a few people already have contacted us, so I know those. But if you have a dietary restriction, please let us know. Uh, with the volunteer question that Lee mentioned, so we'll add a new column in uh, uh, Saturday dinner over here for a uh, second sous chef. Uh, so there will be four people uh, that will be working in preparing the meal. And then there'll be two servers, uh, uh, three servers serving. And believe it or not, that with the 80 people that we think will go through that meal, we need everybody that's there. So we're looking for one more volunteer for Saturday evening. Uh, we're looking for three volunteers for the Saturday noon meal. Uh, likewise, we're looking for, uh, uh, let's see, we're looking for two people for the breakfast. And uh, we're looking for one, two, three, four, five people for uh, Sunday at noon. So I have a list. I will pass it around. If you want to pin your name on that list in any of those vacant spots, we would appreciate it. Uh, we could use your help. Uh, unfortunately, it's the bewitching hour. We don't have much more time left before the main presentation and the business meeting and the other things that need to happen. Um, uh, if you want to join us uh, later to talk about the band stations and the things, we're going to meet at Vienna Inn after the meeting here tonight. So uh, anyway, uh, anybody has any questions, please ask them when there's breaks with food and uh, other activities. Scott? Usually you give a call out for coolers. Do you want everybody to bring a cooler? Yeah, I think Mike had asked for that earlier. So I think if you do have extra coolers, please bring them. And uh, there's going to be a continuing need for, for ice. Um, in any fashion, bags of ice, blocks of ice, uh, horse-sized sculptures of ice, uh, any of that would be good. From a cooler's point of view, I'm pretty good. A one or two more would be helpful. More importantly is ice. The more ice you bring, the less I'll spend $3 a bag for a few bags. I will buy some just for drinks. But uh, you just put some blocks, put some uh, milk cartons about half full in your freezer to bring them over. I'll make one more pitch for uh, something else people can do. Um, I thank my sister for this, an idea to cover up the guy ropes and uh, wires to protect people. Uh, pool, pool noodles, they're a dollar at Dollar Tree store in Vienna. Um, right, we probably need PVC on that since that's a little harder with uh, reflective tape or something. But uh, anyway, great ideas, thanks. Pass it on to Bill here. Great ideas. Okay, well, thanks everybody for this, this get, part of this team that's putting together Field Day, our biggest event of the year. And. Uh